Her Majesty's ship Colossus was a 74-gun third-rate ship of the British Royal Navy. The standard of third-rate uh, was uh, a vessel that boasted between 64 and 80 guns, typically on two gun decks. It was thought that the uh, third-rate ships embodied the best compromise between uh, sailing ability uh, with the best speed and handling, firepower, and price of build. In a moment, the HMS Colossus. Hi, I'm Alan Stokel. Uh, we just want to uh, spend a couple of seconds talking about Patreon. By you supporting me through Patreon, we can grow marzipan productions faster. Each year, the number of boaters declines. We need some grassroots support to get young people and families into boating. Go faster! We'd like to do more stories on all our channels. For instance, on budget boat cruising, we can really get off the dock and show what it's like to cruise on a small boat. On Grampian Marine, we can do more expert work to help maintain those boats ourselves. Even world's worst maritime disasters can use the brass shined and uh, made a little more ship shape. You can start for as little as a dollar a month and uh, that will get you a credit on our next videos. Thank you. Thank you. She was launched at Gravesend, Kent on the 4th of April, 1787. Her major active duty began on June the 6th, 1793, during the French Revolutionary Wars that included a series of military conflicts lasting from 1792 until 1802 as a result of the French Revolution. They pitted France against Great Britain, Austria, Prussia, Russia, and several other smaller monarchies. Colossus was part of a large fleet of 51 warships of numerous types, including a Spanish squadron but commanded overall by British Vice Admiral Samuel Hood. The fleet arrived off Toulon um, on the um, French Mediterranean on the 26th of August 1793 with Lord Hood on the warship HMS Victory. The object was to keep the uh, French fleet from breaking out. In port were 58 French warships and Lord Hood was determined not to allow such a potent and dangerous fleet to be taken over by French revolutionary forces. This reminds me of the Battle of Mers de Kabir during the Second World War when once again the British were trying to neutralize the French fleet. The Bourbons, the Royalists of France, had uh, retained control of the town of Toulon a vital Mediterranean seaport. Upon the arrival of the British fleet, the Bourbons wisely surrendered the town and their ships to Hood. Sailors and Royal Marines began to land at Toulon from the ships of the Royal Navy fleet. They soon took possession of uh, key forts. The uh, French uh, Republican forces um, all also mobilized and thus began the siege of Toulon on the 7th of September. By the 15th of September, the British and Spanish fleets withdrew, taking with them 15,000 French royalists. The foreign navies had destroyed the dockyards and a large number of French warships. The adventure would have been successful if it were not for the Royal Navy losing 10 ships after the French revolutionary forces captured the heights overlooking the harbor and uh, bombarded the fleet below. In 1795, Colossus was once again part of a large fleet action, the Battle of Groix. A fleet of 25 ships commanded by Admiral Lord uh, Bridgeport on his flagship Royal George fought a French fleet of 23 warships under the command of Rear Admiral Villarette Joyot. 
The battle was huge and chaotic, it, and it raged across a vast area. Yet it came to an indecisive end when Bridgeport ordered his fleet to cease fighting at 7.15 a.m., just four hours after the initial fighting had started. This allowed nine important French warships to escape. Colossus received damage and three sailors were killed and 30 wounded in total. British losses were 31 killed and 113 wounded. French losses are not known, but it is estimated that over 670 French sailors were killed or wounded during the uh, skirmishes that resulted in the capture of three French warships. Here's a strange factoid. While Colossus was involved in bitter fighting, her Scots captain, John Monckton, ordered his kilt-wearing pipers to proceed to the main top mast, say, uh, netting, and play the pipes throughout the battle. I'm sure the French sailors got a good giggle out of that. During uh, one of the opening battles of the Anglo-Spanish War, which was, uh, what, 1796 to 1808, uh, in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent in February of uh, 1797, Colossus, now commanded by Captain uh, George Murray, was involved in yet another large-scale clash of fleets uh, in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. She was part of 21 uh, ships uh, in a fleet including seven smaller craft under the command of Admiral John Gervais in his flagship HMS Victory against the Spanish fleet of 27 ships commanded by Lieutenant General Don José de Cordoba y Ramos. Colossus sustained serious damage, her sails being virtually shot away, affording her no motor power. It looked inevitable that she would be destroyed by the Spanish warships, until HMS Orion uh, headed over to Colossus and protected her. The battle was a major victory for the Royal Navy. Despite being outnumbered, it captured four Spanish ships and crippled seven, including the largest warship afloat at that time, the Santissima Trinidad. Britain lost approximately 300 killed and wounded, the Spanish losses were 1,092 killed uh, or wounded and 2,300 taken prisoner. After the fleet repaired at Naples, Colossus was immediately sent on a cruise of Malta. She then uh, went to Gibraltar before returning uh, to the now repaired fleet in Naples when Horatio Nelson was named her captain. This all happened as Colossus was ordered home to England. On her way, she stopped at Algiers and at Lisbon. And while at Lisbon, she was joined by a large convoy that was bound for Ireland and other northern ports. The convoy dispersed in the English Channel as planned. Caught in bad weather, Colossus sighted the Isle of Scilly uh, first and came to anchor at St. Mary's Roads on the 7th of December. For three days she rode out the storm, only for it to increase. On the night of December 10th, at anchor, one of the anchor cables broke and the ship ran aground on a submerged ledge of rocks off Samson Island. Only one life was lost, the quartermaster, who was taking depth soundings for the log. Rescue boats were immediately put out uh, from the island and all the other crew were safe. On December 11th, the ship settled on her side, the starboard beam, or the widest part of the ship, touching the waves. Attempts to reboard her were thwarted by continuous high seas and on the 15th of December, Colossus mainmast and bowsprit broke away and it became clear that she could no longer be refloated and was committed to the sea. In 1974, the wreck of the Colossus was found and a collection of items were recovered, many of which are now on display 
at the British Museum in London. I'm Alan Stokow.